Welcome to Flash CS6 6 edition of this uh, AS Gamer tutorial. And uh, if we go to hunkim.com slash AS Gamer, you will find uh, a link here. Uh, the sixth tutorial down is called Learn How to Make Enemies with Basic AI, which means artificial intelligence. So when you scroll to the bottom of the tutorial, and you can uh, download the zip file, and it's going to be here you open all the actual associated AS uh, class files and there's quite a few now and when I run this you see that uh, we do have enemies falling down periodically bullets flying in a very interesting manner it looks like they're shooting multiple bullets however uh, in terms of me getting hurt or me hurting the enemies that's not yet implemented but it is kind of uh, fascinating to see how enemies seem to be shooting multiple bullets out the of the sides. Let's study the code. Let's begin by looking at the engine. The engine class, what we have within the game loop, which is called every single frame, uh, there is a random chance of the enemy being created. So math of floor, math random. If you don't like the ugliness of this, you might want to just Google how to generate a random number. And if uh, and there's other ways to create a random condition, but somehow, some way, enemies are created in a random manner. So in this, if this case happens to be true, math.random returning a random number between 0 and 1, then uh, we have a variable enemy, which is of type stinger. This is the actual stinger class, the enemy class. We're going to create a new enemy monster. So the word new automatically creates a real uh, instance, it creates a real object in the in the computer memory and uh, when we create this enemy we want to somehow connect the enemy to our stage which is where we want to draw the enemy as well we want to connect it to a reference to our ship so that we can somehow interact with our ship later. And uh, as for this particular enemy, the enemy is going to be listening. Listening for what? Listening for the event that it is removed from the stage. So the enemy seems to be flying down the screen and in the case where it is removed from the stage eventually we're going to call this function called remove, the en remove enemy. Alright, now we have enemy list dot push enemy. So enemy list is uh, some type of array if you scroll to the top to see where enemy list is declared, you will realize it's an array. Arrays have a function called push, and what that does is it, it pushes it to the end of the list. So say, for instance, the array had A, B, C. If we push the letter D to the end, it's going to be A, B, C, D. So we push values on to the end of the array. This is the opposite of pop. Pop would actually delete the last um, element of the array. So we're just basically making the enemy list longer and adding this particular enemy to the array. Stage dot add child enemy. So here is where we actually draw the enemy onto uh, the uh, screen. So we call this remove enemy function uh, in the case where this particular enemy is removed from the stage, and uh, we have the uh, array of enemies calling this uh, function called splice and when we use uh, the splice function with a particular index comma one it means that uh, we're going to remove that um, element at that index from the array so the way that this part is calculated um, we have enemy limit list dot index of and which index are we talking about which which particular enemy do we want to remove uh, there is a uh, there is this current target um, property which is based off the the uh, variable e which is of type event so basically somehow magically uh, the uh, the enemy that called the that called the actual uh, removed from stage event uh, is gonna um, it's gonna uh, somehow be able to calculate which particular enemy we're talking about so it calculates it and removes that enemy from the enemy array list. Now let's look at the Stinger class here. The Stinger extends movie clip. This is the monster and we have uh, some reference to a stage. We have a vy variable which is um, equal to 3. We have ay equals to 0.4 
and we have a target back to the ship class, which is the, the hero, the main character. So here's the constructor of the uh, Stinger monster class. So re recall that when we created the Stinger enemy ship, we somehow passed in the stage reference as well as the ship uh, reference. So we have this dot stage ref and this dot target equals to these uh, local variables. This referring to the actual class variables. As for the enemy's x and y positions, uh, we're going to have a uh, random x position because this is between 0 and 1 multiplied by the width of the stage is going to generate a random x position across the entire width of the stage. y equals negative 5, we're initializing the monster near the top, in fact a little bit beyond the top of the screen. Every single frame uh, we're going to be listening uh, uh, and going to be calling this function called a loop. Let's see what happens in the loop. So we have the y velocity is equals to y velocity plus a y. This looks like to me it's the acceleration. If you look at the enemies here, they start off slow and they start going faster and faster. So it's the idea of as time passes, as each loop continues, the acceleration, the v y starts increasing um, each time, and we have y equals y plus v y. So v y keeps getting bigger and bigger, and so y equals y plus a bigger and bigger number, so we have the enemy ship accelerating. If the enemy's y position is greater than the stage ref dot stage height, so if it's off the bottom of the screen, we're going to call a function called remove self. Remember that we have this variable called target, which is uh, referencing our ship, so somehow it's comparing the enemy's y position with the target's y position, which is the hero's ship. So somehow, Somehow, if the enemy is uh, very aligned vertically with uh, the hero, then we're going to fire the weapon. Y minus 15 means above the enemy ship is less than target.y, so the hero ship would be below that part, and this is logical and operator, Y plus 15, so a little bit below the enemy is greater than target.y, so uh, this means that uh, this part here is actually um, below the, the hero ship, then we're going to fire a weapon. So we're able to add a child to the stage because we have a reference to the stage and we're going to slap on a, a new bullet and because we need to create a bullet first before we add the, add the actual bullet, we use the word new so we're dynamically creating a bullet and when we create a new stinger bullet, this is the enemy's bullet by the way, not the hero's bullet, we also need to pass in the stage ref so that um, it can uh, actually uh, communicate back with the stage. We also pass in the, the target, which is the reference to the actual hero ship, and we pass in the, the actual x and y coordinates of uh, the, this, the stinger uh, ship. And finally, for the function remove self, in the case where the stinger, the enemy ship, is going to be removed, uh, we want to get rid of whatever uh, event listeners we added. So wherever you see add event listener, eventually there, there should be a corresponding remove event listener for that same add event listener line. And this is a common uh, little code snippet that you can just copy. If stage ref dot contains this, so if uh, an instance of this stinger is actually uh, referenced on the stage, then it, we can actually remove it. Now let's take a look at the stinger bullet. So the stinger is the ship, the stinger bullet is those little tiny little dots that flew sideways. So here's the stinger bullet constructor and it has all the typical references. Uh, to the stage and the ship, and it even understands where the stinger's x and y position was, and it even keeps track of some uh, uh, x uh, velocity uh, setting. All right. So when I look at the variables here, I see vx, the velocity x. Uh, when you think about the bullets shooting sideways, we keep track of the horizontal velocity. Now just a little side note here, notice how these variables are private. 
private means that these variables are only accessible uh, within the class. Um, if you want uh, code in other classes to be able to interact with these variables, it, it can't be private. The common uh, setting is to have no uh, is, um, word private, but rather the word public. It's considered good programming practice to uh, hide variables. It's called encapsulation. So we see that every single frame we call this function loop. So let's take a look at what loop does. So recall that we created multiple stinger bullets. One uh, with back in the stinger class, we created a bullet with a negative velocity vx as well as a positive vx. So we have uh, two different bullets uh, shooting in different directions because when you say x equals x plus vx, uh, one's uh, um, increasing uh, in one direction and one is uh, going another direction because vx is negative. So this line of code is saying that if x is out of bounds, if x is greater than stage dot stage width, so off the right hand side, or this is logical, or the two pipes, x is less than zero, remove self. So if the enemy's bullets are out of bounds, it's going to remove self. And here's the function remove self. Same code as before. Somehow, if uh, if we can remove it, if there's a reference to this these bullets, and just remove it. All right, making some good progress here. A lot of these uh, coding design patterns are you're going to see over and over again. The first time you see them, of course, your eyeballs will be uh, twirling in circles, but uh, don't give up. Keep at it, and you'll be making awesome games very soon.